It's again time to look at some incredible new Skyrim mods. So go grab a drink and relax, let me guide you through them. I'm Bards College graduate and welcome to Jackass, I mean mods of the moment. As we dive into the first mod showcase of today, you might have already noticed something different in my Skyrim, but you can't quite place it. Or maybe you can recognize Cabbage ENB from miles away, and conveniently, that is the first mod of today. So yes, this is Cabbage ENB. It's also my first time trying it out. I know its earlier versions have been out a while in Discord, but I was patient and waited for a Nexus release. The base weather mod for this is NetENB's weather plugin, which ensures a rich and enhanced climate in Skyrim, beautiful skyboxes and clouds, and much more. The ENB preset itself is bright and hazy, with absolutely magnificent shades of color, very modern and fantastical. I love how certain sunsets and fire look, like in Mortal here, the red and orange color is just so intense. The interior spaces are bright and warm, and here I'm pairing the NB with Lux, the amazing interior lighting mod. I tried doing virtual photography with Cabbage, and I found it produces really beautiful pictures from nature to humans, although the skin looks kind of airbrushed, which might not be everyone's cup of tea. The default depth of field is also quite good for this purpose. Of course, an ENB is always heavy on the performance, and Cabbage is definitely not an exception. With my PC specs and 2K resolution, and with all the effects on, I was averaging about 40 FPS, more or less depending on the location. I'm still getting used to the new ENB and probably won't abandon Rudy's, but as you know, variety is the spice of life. The next mod is an unofficial add-on mod to Skyrim. Here is Tales of Skyrim Berserker. This mod introduces a new faction to Skyrim, the Berserkers, who, just like the Companions, are a group of mighty warriors who have the ability to transform completely into something else. There are two new fully voiced quests with a freedom for the choice you can make. I'm gonna follow its tracks. Feel free to come with me. If you choose the right road in these quests, you'll be able to learn the werebear powers and transform into one when your health gets too low or by eating a certain mushroom. And by the way, this shaman looks like she's going to cheer for Finland in an ice hockey game. Uh, anyway, if you want to prevent this transformation, you need to pray at a shrine of Tsun or wear an amulet of Tsun. This mod comes with new armor, spells and ingredients, as well as a werebear perk tree. Let's continue on as there is another entry to the JK's Outskirts mod collection. JK's Solitude Outskirts is a long-awaited mod to overhaul the exterior area around this capital of Skyrim, making it appear larger and busier. This overhaul updates the docks of Solitude, Cutlass Farm and the stables, as well as the Solitude Sawmill. The farm feels bigger now, as it would make sense if it supplies the city with some of the fresh produce. The Sawmill now has its own boat to transport lumber with and these helpful cranes for that. Also, the docks appear now more functional, making it apparent how the ships are being loaded with the trade goods. If you want to see the other JK's Outskirts mods, I showcased them in an earlier video, which I have linked right here. Now, the next mod we have today is Children of the Hist Sampler, Argonian Dock Worker Overhaul. This is another spot-on NPC overhaul mod from one of my favorite modders out there, as it overhauls the appearances of these selected Argonian Dock Workers in the Argonian assemblage outside of Windhelm. Stands in Shallows is based on a horned lizard and is blind on one eye, Shavui is loosely based on a coastal Argonian tribe member, and Netranaza looks extremely cool and is also a Deadwater tribe expat. Now that we're already in Windhelm, we might as well check out the Citadel of Snow, lively Windhelm Bridge. This new mod aims to breathe new life into this city all this time, moreover focusing on its bridge, overhauling it. The NPC's AI has been changed to make them more lively and realistic. No more do the guards just patrol back and forth, but have actual shifts to eat and sleep. 
There are also two new named guards who do their best at keeping Windhelm safe and clean. From another favorite modder of mine, there's a new banger mod. Dynamic Torch Idle Animations overhauls the Vanilla Torch carrying animations, and this one includes three variants for both male and female characters. Now when you wield torches, a new kind of idle animation will play, depending on your outfit or armor type. These animations look cool as they always do, and they are especially great for cinematic shots when using a torch to light up the darkness. Now let's add some more mysticality to Skyrim. Fairy Circles of Skyrim is a lightweight mod that adds 9 new unmarked locations to the game for you to stumble upon. These magical mushroom rings might conceal something sinister among them, or reward you with a treasure. Some can be a little bit hard to find if you have a lot of grass, but a simple TG in the console works if you want to toggle the grass out of the way. This is such a sweet little mod, and new things to find in your adventures are always great. The next mod is Wayrest Sellsword Set. This is a Breton-themed armor set with a shield and a weapon. As always, this mod author always comes up with incredible designs and quality, and the Wayrest Sellsword set is not an exception. This is a heavy armor that can be crafted and comes with new loading screens. The armor is peculiar, highly detailed, like a mix of an explorer, astronomer, and a jester. The sword is blunt with a compass-like pattern on it. The helmet has two versions, with and without the mask. Let's take a look at some textures next. Riton Farmhouse Parallax 3 overhauls the farmhouse textures, making these common houses look incredible without steering too far away from the vanilla style of the textures. I feel like I could just stare at these farmhouses all day long, they're just that beautiful now. This modder has also covered the imperial forts and some of the cities of Skyrim, which I also recommend checking out if you like these parallax textures and want more. Alright, it is inevitable we go to the Morthal Swamp. We always end up there for some reason, so now we go there again, this time with the purpose of adding Windstad into the game. The Heartfire player home Windstad Manor is located at a beautiful place overlooking the mighty solitude. This mod expands the player home area with a completely new settlement around it, bringing some new life and lore to the place. There are new buildings and people that live in them, who of course have their daily routines. You can also learn more about the settlement through these documents and observing the good people inhabiting Winstad. I have great love for the Hjalmark Swamp, and I think this mod is spot on at bringing more life there through this small settlement. And be wary of these hawkers, they don't appreciate us barging into their territory, and I'm just here trying to keep my people safe. Sorry! And while we're here, let's check out Morthal Swamp Mushroom Grass Overhaul by Kemper. This is an environmental mod that makes the grass transform into a grass infested by mushrooms and death bell flowers that affects this Morthal area only. I must say, first when I saw this, I got a really visceral reaction to thinking about walking in there since I really don't like mushrooms. But then I tried it out and saw how that looks really distinct and cool and fits the already peculiar place and makes the swamp more colorful. I love it. Remember when I showcased carriages of Skyrim in an earlier video? Well, no matter if you don't, because now there is carriages of Skyrim 2.0, a reimagined polished version of the original mod. Just as the earlier mod, this adds immersion by adding non-taxi carriages to the game, such as mead, log and hay carriages. These accompanying NPCs have new looks, voices, and also have their own routines. Damn cold up here, eh? If you need wood in a hurry, I'm your man. Some people think women shouldn't be driving carriages and hauling logs. There is now a good variety between the carriages and the NPCs. And while I did like the mod before, now I absolutely love it. And now, <laughs> Serana fans rejoice! We have not only one, but two new replacers for her. 
I swear, at this point, there is a Serrano overhaul for everyone's tastes, but never enough, as I love seeing different takes on her appearance by the talented modders. The first Serrano of today is True Blood Serrano, which is from the creator of Serrano Dialogue add-on. A true Serrano connoisseur, I think. I mean, who isn't? Anyway, this visual update on her character is, of course, beautiful as a picture and very modern and kind of reminds me of the OG mod Serrano Holic. You can choose her hair from three hairstyles and choose black or red hair. In my opinion, I think the shorter black hair fits her the best. The second, but definitely not of a lesser quality Serana overhaul, is blood not included Serana visual overhaul. This Serana is quite a bit different, very distinctive, she looks super vampiric, but still like a Nord girl under all that uh, danger. I really like her wild curly hair and her interesting shaped eyes and that little beauty mark under her lower lip that reminds me of a piercing. She looks super cool. Let me know which Serana overhaul you use in the comments and no, I'm not trying to start a war, just interested in your guys' opinions. Now, this is JS Embalming Tools. Um, that's it, that's the post. Um, showcase. No, <laughs> okay, it's time for a new player home. I just love showcasing player homes, it's usually so cozy. And today's house, Magpie Manor, is definitely cozy. It's located near Whiterun by the river and it costs 30,000 septims. The dominant aesthetic of this house is definitely sophisticated, a perfect fit for an art-loving scholar or an alchemist character. The house and the yard is full of custom assets, from furniture to the statues and paintings. Such a beautiful place. Inside Magpie Manor, you can light the fireplaces and the candles to make it warm and full of light. The house is full of such little details, and to amp it up even further, there is also an atelier where you can choose Christmas or Halloween decorations for your house. How sweet! I absolutely love this feature. It makes the home insanely cozy. There is also a hidden vampire room, all of the crafting stations, space for every book there is, a lot of fun interactive stuff around the house, a cool hidden chamber for all your valuables and more. Magpie Manor is definitely a great player home with a lot of features, so do check it out if you're in need of a beautiful residence for you and your companions. Thank you for watching the video. Hey, let me know in the comments which ones of these new mods tickled your fancy, so to say. I think today's collection was an extra fun one, definitely the types of mods that I like the most. If you enjoyed any of that, help a bard out and press gently on the like button. Special thanks to Okter Lucan, Carrot Guy Kai, Jacob, Apeli, and Ryan Ulrich, and all my other supporters in Patreon for supporting my passion and letting me try my wings at this YouTube thing. If you'd like to join the production crew, check out BCG Patreon, the link's in the description. Take care and see ya!